I was there when humanity first began their long path to the top of the food chain. At first I was puzzled, wondering how could a race come to exist. I was not sh I was so sure they wouldn't last against the predators, disease, and disasters. Yet, they didn't just survive them, they defeated them. Predators became prey as humanity to created tools, diseases were cured with medicine, and structures were built to withstand disasters. Humanity slowly, but surely, made their way to the top of the food chain, and stood there, uncontested. They constantly fought amongst themselves, growing stronger as they did, and left many scars on me. I do not mind, for I could tell that they were making ways to reverse the damage they left. I grew to admire them for their abilities to overcome any obstacles in their path, for their skills to adapt to any challenge. They earned the right to tame me. Then these ponies came, and all that changed. At first, humanity was baffled, wondering how did an entire continent appear right in the middle of an ocean. And they only responded with magic. They were nice at first, curing some diseases that still plagued humanity, but I noticed their intentions. They saw humanity as brutes, little more than misguided beings who needed their so-called goddess to help them rise out of the basic destructive in instincts. I was surprised when they later voiced my thoughts perfectly. I thought that they had the idea that humanity would see that their words were true and come to be converted in huge numbers. They were wrong. Those conversion bureaus were forced to shut down by the government in countless countries or burnt down to the ground by angry mobs. When they found out that the process didn't cha just change their bodies, it changed their minds as well. I saw that the ponies were either put into poisoned camps or fled back to their land, Equestria. Later. I heard their plans that if they couldn't save humanity through kindness, then they would save them through force. I watched as they secretly mixed a potion with different drinks that humanity had created, watching what happened. After apparently mixing all the potion and certain drinks only changed the body, but not the mind. So while many humans were converted into little more than drones, more and more were shocked at what they became. What followed next was war, and humanity is always at its strongest during war. When humanity's mil military battled the Equestrian military, it was a rather one-sided fight, through, though that magic they had gave ponies an edge. Scientists studied the potion itself. It turned out that even magic had cells. It is. If it was intended to be used against the body and using nanotechnology, they made the body be able to recognize and destroy the magic cells. The ponies were very shocked when they saw that their potion no longer worked. They still did have one advantage, though. The barrier. It kept everything out, and if constant stream of magic was applied, it could last for a long time. The ponies si simply decided to give the barrier the ability to move and hide behind it as it destroyed everything humanity had created and forcibly convert any humans caught by it. I knew that humanity could make a weapon that to counter it, but I saw that by the time they had, much of their population would be converted and the ponies would simply overrun what little of humanity that remained. Knowing this, I decided that enough was enough. Humanity earned their right to live here, and if their pony, these ponies thought that they could just come here and take over, 
then they will learn a lesson that humanity learned long ago. And what do you know? Turns out the barrier kept everything in as well as out. New Manhattan, aka New York City. In the skyscraper with just with a large glass window, Celestia smiled as her she watched the barrier slowly make its made its way across the earth. It's been a harsh two years, but finally they would triumph against those humans. Even she admitted that she never expected the humans to be so stubborn against being saved from their basic instincts, nor would they develop a way to counter the potion. Still, even with those lost in the, of countless ponies in the war, the barrier would win. For them, the human world see, would see a good, how good it would be a pony. Hearing hoofsteps, the alicorn turned to see Twilight coming, rubbing her eyes. Good morning, Princess Celestia. The new alicorn greeted, standing beside the form her former teacher in front of the large window. What are you doing up so early? Just enjoying the, new the view and the fact that I don't have to raise the sun every morning, Celestia replied, and was truly honest at that. It was very surprising to both her and her sister when the celestial bodies moved at their own here on Earth. How also, you don't have to call me princess anymore. Twilight blushed lightly in embarrassment. Sorry, I'm just getting used to the whole princess thing. She turned her head, her attention to the barrier. A smile appeared. I still can't believe those humans are being so are so against being saved. I mean, it's only a matter of time before they wipe themselves out. Celestia nodded in her head in agreement. Before, a question popped in her head. Have there been any progress in taming this planet's uh, ecosystem? Twilight shook her, winced at that mentally, hoping her former teacher wouldn't ask her that. No, it seems that the planet is actively fighting against her magic. Like how Everfree is capable of doing. She left out the fact that there were, were places on Earth for the f that made the Everfree one of the most dangerous places in Equestria seem like a park in comparison. Not to mention the animals don't seem to like ponies that much. Fluttershy nearly got torn to shred when she, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash went to free those canine units from their pens. Her stare only could only affect so many animals at once, and eventually the royal guards had to call, had to be called to stun the, the dogs. Even then, several royal guards were killed, and her friends received several injuries. Still, I'm sure we'll be able to tame them with time. Without another word, the two alicorns went to, di to the dining hall to enjoy breakfast. Arriving there, they saw that Twilight's friends, along with Luna, were already awake and enjoying their mail. Good morning, sister, and good at morning, Twilight, Luna greeted them as they entered the other following, following her example. Rainbow Dash looked up from her pancakes. Say, Twilight, how much longer are we going to stay here? I really want to fly again. Her wings flapped a few times, but succeeded in only causing a breeze. It was an effect from leaving Equestria to anywhere the barrier had passed. These, there simply wasn't enough magic around them to allow them to do it, things they could normally do. Unicorns were the exception as their bodies store magic, but once they ran out, they were just as normal as Earth ponies. Twilight sat down. A plate of hay bacon, calling her name. The barrier should cover the earth in a, a few more months' time, so just hang on a bit longer, Dash. The rainbow main Pegasus just sighed in anno annoyance and went back to her food, wishing she could feel the fl enjoy the feeling of flight again. Fluttershy picked up her plate, a depressed look on her face, which Applejack noticed. Sugar cube. 
You still ain't bummed about those dogs, are you? Oh no, well, yes, but... The shy Pegasus spoke, voice barely above a whisper. I'm just shocked at how humanity could train those poor dogs to attack. I mean, it's already bad enough. They hunt hunted so many animals to extinction, but... Do they have to train animals to hunt the other animals? Herity reached over and patted her on her back. Well, don't worry, darling. In a few months' time, those nasty humans will be ponies, and see the way they lived was wrong. After that, we can all work to help retrain those animals. Honestly, it's bad enough that animals in the Everfree can take care of themselves, but a whole planet worth? All these ponies shivered at that. Well, we'll help them out after we help it, the humans. Pinky quickly stood up, a cup of orange juice in her hoof, and exclaimed, Yeah! Those humans are going to see how great it is to be a pony! Do hominy! Do hominy! Everyone cheered with a cup in the hand, in the air. Suddenly, lightning crashed through the window, making every pony jump, or in Fluttershy's case, hide under the table. Crash! Everyone jumped back when a wagon of all things cl crashed onto the table. It was only ma then they heard the roars of the wind, uh, wind and the sounds of the thunder. More windows shattered, some from the sheer force of the wind, or with objects of different size crashing through them. The princesses quickly made a barrier to protect them from the barrage of the wind and objects. What is going on? Celestia yelled out over the wind as if on cue a voice spoke back. Ponies! It sounded of countless years of wisdom and age in its voice. Everything shaking as each syllable formed. I have had enough of you. Most of them looked around scanning for the voice. Owner of the voice. Where are you? Twilight yelled, making sure that the barrier protecting them was still stable. I am everything, and everywhere, at once, but that is not important. The voice made cracks appear in the barrier as it spoke. What is important that I am tired of you ponies, attempting to tame me when you have no right to do so. The confusion on their voice and Celestia spoke up. Tang you? What do you mean? The barrier of yours is trying to force your magic onto me, and I will not have no more of it. Not to mention, you keep harassing my rightful owners. Owners? What kind of animal are you then? Luna said, fear creeping in her voice, remembering the countless human myths she had read. Perhaps not all of them were myths after all. First, my owner is humanity, and second, I am not an animal! The next three words shocked all of them to their core. I am Earth. Nothing came out of the collective pony's mouth for a few moment minutes, until Twilight shook herself out of it. That's impossible! A planet can't be sentient! Then explain this! A bolt of lightning far more powerful than any pony could, can hope to create, struck the barrier, creating, protecting them to shatter. It scattered them across the room. Celestia slowly stood up, back up, before saying, Please, if you truly are the planet, then you should be helping us. All the damage humanity caused to you can be reversed with the barrier and magic. No, the scars humanity gave me I shall allow them, only them or myself, to heal. No mutated horses will be allowed here anymore. The voice said as they regrouped together, back together. Twilight and her friends stepped forward, determining looks on their faces. We don't care if you are that planet. With the elements of harmony, we will defeat you, she said, her friends cheering beside her. You mean these? 
the chest holding the elements crashed into the ground, the room, before the co any pony could react. Another bolt of lightning, far more powerful than the last one, struck it. Not even ash remained, for the only of it, only a smoke hole, where it once was. The, the elements! Twilight whimpered, fear in her voice as her and her friends backed into Celestia and Luna. This is your only warning, ponies. Leave me and humanity alone, and never return. Or... The voice tone became low and deep, as thunder itself spe was speaking to them. You can learn one of the harshest lessons that humanity has ever learned. Celestia spread her wings in anger, eyes narrowed at her surroundings, which is... To those who tame me, I am paradise. But those who haven't, I am hell. Now will you leave? The two alicorns looked and shared a nod. Celestia then spoke up. We tamed our planet long ago, and we will tame you. You were wrong to make an enemy out of us. No, you were wrong thinking I could be tamed by the likes of you. The wind started to die down. Now, remember, Luna and Celestia, all the lives lost from here on out could have been avoided if you simply left. The wind stopped completely. All the objects crashed to the ground. Twilight slowly looked up to her former teacher, tears in her eyes. C Celestia, the elements, the white alicorn sighed. It is regrettable, Twilight. But we will make do without them. Applejack then heard something, her left ear twitching. Uh, y'all hear that? They all walked up to the broken window before carefully not to step on the glass, looking onto the city. What they saw horrified them. The streets below were now filled with torrents of water as ponies desperately tried to find something to hang on to. Even from up here, they could hear the screams of countless ponies as they were washed away by the flood. What they didn't know, that this, that it was only the beginning. In the following months, I sent them all kinds of nasty things. Locusts that completely devoured all their crops, diseases, that they had no immunity against, disasters that torn down and washed away anything they tried to build, animal attacks being mo far more frequent. Oh, they tried to fight against me, but even their magic, even that magic of theirs had limitations, and one of them was that it could not be everywhere at once. I, on the other hand, made sure they stayed. Their stay was absolute hell and drought, famine, widespread disease, and countless other problems. Soon after six months and nearly 60% of the population dead or dying, they collapsed the barrier and ran back home. Of course I made sure to send a few more problems before the portal closed to make sure they don't return. Humanity was understandably confused and wondered what happened. The location that the ponies held Beyond the barrier were riddled with signs of disaster, natural disaster along with the appearance of different diseases in the corpse of the ponies that were left behind. Scientists then theorized the introduction of magic into the Earth's ecosystem caused a violent reaction within the barrier as no po other place outside was affected. Not even other states that were right next to the barrier suffered. Even the slightest form of disaster or disease, still nations around the earth world celebrated that they survived. Even the humanities the humans that were transformed into ponies slowly made their way back into society in the following years. Humanity earned their, their place on the top of the food. Humanity earned their place at the top, and nothing was going to change that. Not if I had anything to say about it.